Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fringe Toast. Fringe Toast Live. I'm joined by Rachel of uh, Metaphysical Roundtable and also Realistic Holistic uh, and located in 311 Main Street, Villareca, Georgia. Uh, so our our show tonight is kind of lax and mainly because I threw it together at the spur of the moment. And so I found a list on higgypop.com if you're not familiar with higgypop.com it's very fun rachel it's a very fun website mm -hmm. they do they devote part of their website to like techniques and whatnot of for paranormal investigating and then they have an entirely other side of their website that they devote to the fandom of paranormal entertainment so to speak so you know you're, the shows that you see on travel channel and whatnot and then even some of those uh private investigators such as yourself you know those private eyes uh are showcased there on their on on their website and so it's fun to go there and see what's going on they are based in the uk so some of the things that they talk about on that website we can't actually get unless you have a vpn you sneaky devils um but yeah 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 So we, I just, re, I've just realized that the entire time that we've been away, I was intending on adding you to our intro video um, because Matt nor Michael have, I think Matt and I may have done like two lives. Mm -hmm. You and I have done more than the two of them and they're they're seen on the video. I've got to get that fixed. Well, I wasn't going to say anything. Because who am I? Who am I? I'm just I'm just somebody who reads you, slow and gets my feelings hurt all the time. Don't you do me. read slow. <laughs> but you're our favorite slow reader. <laughs> uh, yeah. You got to love inside jokes, right? <laughs> so uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Rachel has a show on Monday nights called called answers from beyond dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it does sound creepy whenever it does sound like cartoonishly like scooby-doo uh, but it is very fun and you are very talented at what you do and that you you take your time with individuals that's what we mean whenever i call her a slow reader because she is a slow reader and it's not it's not a bad thing you know, it's not hooked. I'm not, I don't mean that in the sense of hooked on phonics. Right. I know that it was just, and, and the reason why I'm like that is because I'm just basically reading comments and it's, I'm, I just feel like I have to try and make them understand. So I'm given every description, every metaphor, everything that I possibly can. And I know that you didn't mean anything about it, but I have to aggravate you about something and that's it. No, so. that's okay. I'm not telling, I'm not explaining it so you'll stop doing it mm -hmm. i know oh, I, yeah. I come from a, a a long family lineage of people giving people shit as a form of love mm -hmm. so uh, right. i appreciate it thank you <laughs> <laughs> so you're used to the abuse <laughs> yes <laughs> i know <laughs> anyway so this has been a really fantastic week and i thought i would cap it off with a friday edition of uh fringe toast live and um so what we're gonna do there's i found this glossary on higgypop.com and it's got 60 terms on there now mm -hmm. look i don't want to be on here for an entire three or four hours i just don't I'm not interested in that like one hour tops so i'm thinking if we can smash through 30 of these 
out, we'll be okay. And if we decide that we want to do this again, we can. But I'm thinking, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't have the ambition to go through 60 of these definitions with you all tonight. Um, so the first one's pretty simple. And these are in all in alphabetical order, by the way. And there's, what? there's a, okay. So um, I just want to say it's Higgy, H I G G Y. Yeah. Pop. I did look it up after I saw Iggy Pop. I was like, I knew that sounded familiar for a reason. So once you go on the website, where are you at looking at this list of terms? Um, so the, the list of terms is uh, located in uh, news and glossary of ghost hunting terms. So okay. if you go to ghost hunting, the tab mm -hmm. at the top, and there's a link in the description box of this video for any of you that might be uh, watching this and want to participate and read along. And maybe you just want to keep reading after I've given up because that's a lot will happen. Um, because unlike R Rachel, I am also a slow reader, but I <laughs> am literally a slow reader. <laughs> and uh, you guys are about to learn about that. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, so the first term is apparition. Wait a second. They've got a disclaimer here at the top, and I feel like I, it's necessary for me to read that because I love disclaimers. I'm in the business of disclaimers. But uh, that disclaimer, disclaimer reads, although the paranormal terms listed in this glossary are commonly used, their in inclusion in this list is not an endorsement of that particular method, piece of equipment, or branch of the paranormal. Neither is it a reflection on its credibility. The list is purely intended to help you understand these common words and phrases. So I thought that was beautiful. That was well written. That's a that's written like a technical document. Mm -hmm. And I like technical documents because I'm that kind of guy. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, mm -mm. <laughs> not you. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you guys for tuning in. So apparition is our first term. And apparition is the term used to describe a visible embodiment of the spirit of a dead person or animal, all also called a ghost. An apparition isn't limited to vision to vision of dead people. It's rare, but on occasions there has been witness reports of people seeing ghosts of the living. Uh what do you say about that? That sounds like uh, that sounds like astral projection. Yeah, that's the astral projection. So, yeah. So, the next one is apport. Ap uh, ap apport. Mm -hmm. I've never even heard this term before. Uh, An apport. That's a p p o r t. For I know it may sound like I'm saying airport. But I'm saying airport. Anyway, uh, an an airport is when an object is transferred from one place to to another through a non-understood paranormal method. Airports are often associated with poltergeist activity or seances, but can also result in objects appearing from nowhere during investigations. Often, this is this is coins. The phenomenon of pennies from heaven. I've, I have heard of this phenomenon, but I never knew mm -hmm. the vocabulary word that could be associated with that. Uh, did yeah. you did did you have an experience like this? I could have sworn um, you told me you found a dime whenever you were in. You found a dime in your pocket or something other. Yeah, you, well, it's all kinds of things. Um, I to me, this is whenever I lose my keys. You know, or if I am looking for something mm -hmm. and it might be something because I know there's been a couple of times where I knew I didn't have it. But I'm like, oh, man, I'd really like this. And then it just show up. Hmm. I could have sworn um, I don't. Maybe it was Jennifer that said that she had found dimes. I think it was Jennifer with a dime. But no, I do it with rocks and um, they'll just show up now in my house. And I okay. imagine that. 
<laughs> you got you got so many rocks you just forget now, that you put them in your now, pocket that's todd he goes i guess it just apported there you didn't buy it i'm like no somebody <laughs> gave it to me <laughs> yeah so i should have known that because i should have known that that was what that was going to be about because port is a term for gateway or doorway mm -hmm. uh and apport uh yeah yeah anyway and I guess technically, you know, the what was it, the ship, the Philadelphia? I wonder if it would be considered Philadelphia experiment. Uh -huh. Yeah, I wonder if it would be considered a ported, or if since they knew that it was going to go into a different dimension or time, would that be considered since they knew they were sending it? I, I guess. Don't know. Yeah. Hmm. That's a that's a good question. Let's. Look. I should have brought a notebook. I don't right. bring any equipment to class. I'm a horrible student. Well, I'm assuming since you know. Uh-oh. 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 Rachel. Rachel, you got to plug in the Ethernet cord. Hello? You're back. I'm back. Yes. Huh. Makes me wonder what happened. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That's strange. Um, so astral projection. Uh, uh, this is one that you've talked about on a pretty regular basis. Astral projection is the claim that a person can intentional and in, intentional induce an out of body experience, allowing their astral body to travel elsewhere in the universe, leaving their physical body behind. Uh, so. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cut and dry. There's nothing. There's no, nothing spangly about that, unless you have something to add. No, mm -mm. Eh, pretty. Mm -mm. Automatic writing. Automatic writing is a method of communication which is similar to a Ouija board. It involves a medium or participant holding a pen and letting spirits take control of their hand in order to write an answer to questions or relay a message. A, a, a specially adapted planchette may also be used by one individual or a group of people. A pin is placed into the planchette, which is is able to slide freely across a piece of paper. Oh, I've, I've never, never heard, heard of it done that way. Before. I've never heard of it. And I was wondering why they would associate it with a Ouija board. But that would kind of you know, makes sense. I was always, you know, I think anybody could do it. You don't have to be a medium. It's just hard to separate yourself from like, did I really write this or was just me? Because, you know, you can write without looking, but this is also part of a uh, trans channeling. So trans channeling. Yes. It's Maybe you, that... You're just channeling information. So there was a, uh... There was a, uh, I believe her name was Diane that you would come to the shop. Mm -hmm. um, she, she practiced that the night that we did the Estes method session there. And you know, she got a lot of things. She wrote down lot, lots and lots of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I have a hard time believing. I'd love to see this in practice with this multiple people on a single planchette. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it before. And I wonder I have a hard time believing that anything would be legible. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that if it, if there was like something, some word that was generated from multiple people trying to hold the same pen, that is pretty supernatural in my opinion. Like that's just multiple people's handwriting. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah, whenever you think of a Ouija board with a planchette, there's already predefined information and it just moves to it. So whenever I think about that, using a pen with a planchette in there, then it'd be. I guess everybody would have to totally relax and perhaps a spirit or, you know, the spirit or whatever would guide maybe one hand. I wouldn't I don't know if it'd be able to guide all three hands or you know multiple hands to move in the same direction because that just so perhaps maybe one person is actually doing that this is, yeah and maybe you know it's just like looks like a team effort i wonder if that's how it works 
Mm. Well, we're gonna have to look into that a little on a, I a agree. Bit of different day. Write that down in your imaginary notebook. I am. This is being recorded, so okay. I can go back and watch it, if, <laughs> and take notes later sometime. All right. So evidently, there's no B words. Uh, so for all you B holes out there, uh, there's nothing here for you. Uh, so the next one is calling out, calling out or asking out is the act of speaking aloud in an attempt to encourage any spirits that might be present to communicate with you. The classic ghost hunters trope is hello. Is anyone there? The idea is to <laughs> ask a question or encourage them to give you a sign they can hear you. Then listen for a response, either a physical movement or sound or a response via a ghost hunting gadget. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a shout out. Hey, hey, holla at me. If you hear, speak up. Speak or say something. what's our catchphrase? What's how, how long you been dead? <laughs> <laughs> And then there's a ghost trauma. What? I'm dead? What? What happened? I'm dead? All right, I'm back. Yeah. All right. Could you imagine like two ghosts and be like, bro, you're dead. Be like, what? I'm dead? But like, yeah, you're totally dead. <laughs> I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Um. We're going to make it to the D's. I can already tell. No, we, the next one up is cat balls. This is new. This is new in the zeitgeist. <laughs> cat balls uh, or pet toys mm -hmm. can be used on paranormal investigations as trigger objects. The type most commonly used are plastic balls. They're designed to light up and flash to entertain cats and dogs when they're played with on an investigation. Uh, these pet toys are placed on the floor or a flat surface in the hopes that a spirit may interact with it, causing it to light up. So this is fairly this, this is a fairly new thing. Uh, I don't know if I believe it. A lot of, a lot of these toys are made in in China. Uh, yeah. So. Well, I'm I'm well, assuming you know I know it's just like the REM pod, but I mean if it was like on a flat level surface and everybody was away from it, I don't see why. Um, you know, I guess there would have to be physical manipulation because I don't think there's any, you know, beam that makes it go off. I think it has to be physical manipulation. I don't. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Bobby, if you was what? in a room with cat balls and yeah, one, off. one flew across the room, you'd be like, mm. yeah, How? but I have yet to see that happen. Yeah. Now, now, if if I did see that, mm -hmm. then. I would be very excited, but, and I'm not going to say it couldn't happen, mm -hmm. but I'm also, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't, okay. It would have to be way more than just like, you know, a little bit of earthquake movement. Right. You know, well, I, I just had a thought. So I think things like the cat balls would be appropriate. Like if you could, if you could think about the ghost that you're trying to contact, if you know that ghost is there and you're trying to show it. So that would be maybe something for a soccer player. And I know that's kind of specific, but that's still a good idea though, you know, or maybe, I don't know, because see, my thing is, I think if you connect with them that way, then you get more of a response instead of the Zach Vegas. I know you're dead. Talk to me right now. <laughs> you know, be like, Hey, can you still, how far can you kick? You know? Can you still yeah. think while you're dead? Yeah. I, I see this used a lot with in regard to uh, kids, like mm -hmm. spirits of, of children that they think are there. And, you know, they get activity, but does that mean, I mean, we've gotten activity a lot in regard to stuff like toys that light up and whatnot and things that go off unprompted. I don't know that that means that, you know, I don't know. Anyway. Let's move along. We've <laughs> we've made it to cold spots. It's believed that unexplained cold spots and sudden significant temperature drops are a slight a, a sign a spirit being present. You should be aware of not only cold spots in a haunted location but also unexplained hot or warm areas 
as this too might indicate a supernatural presence. Uh, you were actually the first person to tell me that maybe, or I don't, I don't know if you were the first person, but I'm fairly certain that it was the first time I heard it. It was at, at realistic holistic, um, that, we needed to begin to pay attention to the idea of like, not just cold spots, but like hot, warm, Mm -hmm. warm sensations for no apparent reason. All of that being indicators that there might be a spiritual presence. Yeah. Because whenever, whenever I can feel it, I will get really, really hot. And I was never taught that I, everybody was like, Oh, it's a cold spot. Do you feel how cold it is? Look how the temperatures dropped. So I always associated that. So in the beginning, whenever I'd get really, really hot, I never really thought that it was just, you know, I didn't, I didn't ever know until I started doing trends channeling. And I was like, and so now I can feel it as a unit of measurement, like how close they are. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wish, uh, well, I'm going to, I'd say I wish I was that sensitive, but mm-hmm. for real, I don't, I don't want to. Well, Mm -hmm. I would rather me not notice a change at all. And then because that to, to me for there to be such a massive shift that it's very evident is, is more indicated, indicated in, in it means that that's true. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. You'll get it out in a minute. (laughs) All right, so we did make it to the D's, but before we move on to the D, um, let's check in on the chat. We got we got a metaphysical roundtable. I believe that that is our friend Jennifer over there, and she is she is talking about trans channeling and how uh, you uh, spy on us spies on and, and then she's trying to see where everyone's uranus is <laughs> talking about balls again gas balls yeah <laughs> and uh glenda peck hello thank you for tuning in i appreciate you very very much um we got some ideas for t-shirts uh let the ghost play with the cat balls i mean cat balls it's scary. All right. Yeah, and the, I think the I think the popularity from the cat balls is you can go to Dollar General or Dollar Tree and get them, and they're really really cheap. Right. You know, and they're really really cheap, which leads me to believe that maybe there are some. You know, they are designed to mm-hmm. be entertainment devices, not necessarily. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. I have seen, I guess, some more quality versions on. Um, ghost hunting websites where they offer like those bears and the rim pods and the cameras, they do have actual, you know, bigger balls. <laughs> they got bigger balls. They got yes. bigger balls. Yeah. But, right. um, so <laughs> bigger balls <laughs> that you got to pay for those bigger balls though. Yeah. You got to pay the price for them. Um, so first up on the, on the, on the D is a demon demonic hauntings are said to be caused by non-human entities unlike ghosts or spirits demons were never human they have never been alive and have only ever existed purely as malevolent energy which is intent on causing suffering to those that it haunts some traditions go as far as to say that demons may not even be from our plane of existence instead believing them to be entities that have survived from a former universe or have found a way to cross over from a parallel universe demons are closely related to imps uh i don't know that's imps uh that's that's not a pimp that's not pimps they're not closely related to pimps um all right, moving along. I have Demonology. No comment. You yeah. do not have any comment no. at all. All right. <laughs> Demonology. Demonology, as practiced by demonologists, is the study of demons or demonic beliefs. Protection and eradication is a major part of demonologist roles. Uh, 
that's pretty well known. Direct voice phenomenon or DVP, direct voice phenomenon, is the experience of hearing audible disembodied voices that are heard during paranormal investigations, seances, or at a haunted location. These voices are spoken directly to the witnesses and heard without electronic equipment. Uh, I've experienced that before. But I also, you know, may have been hallucinating. So that's happened also. I've done that before. <clears throat> Dowsing rods. It's Cooper is raising hell, ain't he? Yeah. Dowsing is a technique which is usually used to locate groundwater, but is also used in, a, in an attempt to communicate with the dead. Paranormal investigators generally use a pair of symbol L-shaped metal rods. One is held in each hand with the short arm of the L held upright, the long arm pointing forward. You need to hold your arms as still as possible and ask the spirits questions. You could ask them to indicate an answer by moving the tips of the rods closer together, further apart, or to point the rods in a specific direction. Uh, so, Fox, uh, Michael Fox practices this. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been with him whenever he has done it, but I know that he does. Um, you know, and it's led to them making some really fantastic discoveries about and, and to get their hands on physical materials that cooperate with evidence that they have retrieved from an investigation. So that's, that's pretty interesting. And it, the fact that it's one of the oldest forms of investigating mm -hmm. out there you know, that lends itself to some legitimacy because, you know, there's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of mentality there. Yeah, it's very basic. I think, I mean, I know it works, but basic and free pretty much. So Dybbuk box. Dybbuk box is, is said to be a box which contains an evil or malevolent spirit or demon. Uh, a genuine Dybbuk is usually very old, often an antique wooden box, which is sealed using melted wax to keep whatever in, whatever's inside from getting out. As a matter of fact, it's interesting that dowsing rods would be mentioned right before the Dybbuk box, right. because that is, in fact, the physical evidence that I'm, I'm talking about. Anyway, ectoplasm is up we've made it to the e ectoplasm has been immortalized as a slimy substance of supernatural origin in popular culture but the phenomenon dates dates back to victorian era mm -hmm. when mediums would produce reams of ectoplasm as parts of their elaborate shows the ectoplasm starts off transparent or even visible but as it was charged with psychic energy by the medium it would become visible and more of a physical substance, which was white in color. Ghosts would then drape this over their ethereal bodies mm -hmm. uh, to give them a corporeal form. Sorry, there. these are some big words. I know that it might make me sound ridiculous, but I'm having to sound this stuff out. Yeah. So whenever I first started learning about all this, you know, m the knowledge here, I guess, in America is very limited because as a country, we're only so old. And so there's not like really a whole lot of stories to go back and back. So whenever you research like in London and England where they have seances and channeling, they talk about the ectoplasm like it's just normal. And I remember, so they will sit in a dark room and the mediums will sometimes just have it ooze out. And I'm just like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Like at what stage does that happen? Does that happen to everybody? I don't know if I'm ready for that. And 
so that happens and I know there was talks before about people doing trans channeling and our mediumship work and it shortening their life and I'm wondering if it's because people were oozing this ectoplasm and I don't know what it is I don't know like I know it has to do with your ethereal body but I don't know exactly like are you using your energy I don't know it just it just I'm really curious about that I mean, it is very interesting. Um, some of the, the earliest photographs ever taken mm -hmm. of humans were some of people with the ectoplasm coming out of their mouth. Um, but what the, it may be poisonous, like maybe they're using a chemical and that was actually poisonous, which is why they, they, they died sooner uh, than the average bear. Um but I will say this, if there is, if there is, if it was just a show, mm -hmm. they did a serious injustice for the rest of the community. Because like yourself, you're like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I'm, you, it might not even be anything that you need to even mm -hmm. consider. Like, I just wish that the truth was known about that. And maybe it is, if you know that it is please take an opportunity to drop us a comment in the comment box and let us know if you found some evidence that would indicate uh, that all of that was fakery. And yeah. Cause I think most, whenever we think of ectoplasm now, we think of ghostbusters. The TV yes, the movie. So that's what you think of. That's you don't, good stuff. Like, like, Oh, we got slimed, you know, exactly. not sitting in a seance in the medium projectile, you know, slime. Oh, so. <laughs> Be like you paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> they paved the road. Uh, so let's move. Let's move right along. Uh, we the next up is a pretty popular one. I don't. I don't know that I really need to talk about this one. I don't know if I need to read it, but this is an electronic voice phenomenon or a EVP. It's pretty short, so I'll go ahead and roll it out real quick. Electronic voice phenomenon is the mysterious sound of disembodied human-like voices of unknown origin that are heard through electronic devices. They are usually heard in the form of sounds imprinted on an audio recording or through radio noise. Uh, so this actually encapsulates everything that you hear from an electronic device pretty much that you believe to be the spirit or sound of a paranormal source uh, so if it's using the ghost box the a recorder you know disembodied voices over a recorder uh, the spirit the s box that we used during our investigation at your shop all of that falls under the category of electronic voice phenomenon. Elemental. An elemental is a non-human entity that originates from occult and alchemical works that date back as far as the time of the European Renaissance. They are often associated with na nature and the four, cl four classical elements, for example, a gnome, which is associated with earth, which other... Uh, which other intimentals being linked to water, air, and fire. Um, do you have anything to say about this? Because I do, and it's really nerdy, really dorky. It's an old story. Right. Uh, but, actually, a lady came in a couple weekends ago, and she had pictures of one that was peering out through her garage. Came into your store? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. With a photograph of one. Yes. Well, so there was there was a couple ladies. It was it was a little trio of ladies, and they it was they were quite phenomenal because one lady had this experience and she has it over and over. She was like, I actually moved because of it, because it was like in an outside garage. And the other lady, she had pictures of uh, fairies, and she had you know taken them, and it was. It was really cool. And I'm like, this is so cool there. But it's just, you know. And then there was another gentleman in the store. And he goes like, oh, my gosh, let me show you my fire one. And he showed a, a picture of the one in fire. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to put my story away for Well, no, because we all like shoes, Bobby. We all <laughs> like shoes. 
<laughs> what? So we all like shoes. Yeah. Was that going to be your nerdy one? No, no, no. Okay. Um, well, tell yours. Tell yours. Okay. So when I was in high school, all right, there was these, these group of girls who claim to be elementals themselves and um there was some unexplained things that that really did like almost thought that maybe this was associated with like anime or some kind of tv show or whatnot mm -hmm. but i can't to this day i can't find their names that they called <laughs> one another I can't find any the I can't find any of that stuff in on any reference on the internet. And this was the early days of the internet. Mm -hmm. I can't find anything. No reference to them, their names in books. No reference to their names and uh, on YouTube. Nothing. Zero. Nada. And there were people, other people, other individuals that were relatively unique individuals who knew things connected to these ladies uh, that he overheard them and then mm -hmm. chimed in with some shit like he would hear on a TV or like on a TV show or whatnot. And also he swore against them. Like he was like, I ain't got nothing for you anymore. Now, these were four really close friends to me. Like, they were just people. And, but he all of a sudden was almost scared of them. So that was, that's, that's my nerdy twist to oh, wow. the elemental lore. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good off the air story. Well, it's on the air. I know, but I want to hear more later. Uh, Oh, you know I mean, you, you can do it now, but I'm going to say I know you don't want to take up all the time. But no, that sounds like a really cool story. No, that makes a, that makes me more wonder. Details. Yeah. Um, our EMF meter, electromagnetic frequency meter is a common piece of ghost hunting kits with the recognizable K2 EMF meter being one of the most popular once turned on, it will alert you to spikes in the in ambient electromagnetic field, giving instant via five color LED indicators. You've seen the thing. Maybe I should show a picture of this. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. We're not doing that. We ain't doing it. Hang on. I'll send it out to everybody. Did you get it? <laughs> I did. That's, that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> it don't matter. If you've if you've watched any paranormal stuff, you've seen this thing. It's like rainbow colors at the top. It looks like a remote control with rainbows, a uh, rainbow at the top of it. Okay, entity. An entity is an umbrella or catch-all term for any kind of supernatural paranormal being. This could count, could be countless things, including ghost, spirit, poltergeist, elemental, imps, fae, and demon. The Estes Method made it on this list. How mm -hmm. about that? The Estes Method is a type of sensory depriva deprivation experiment that is designed to eliminate the sub subjectivity of the investigator by cutting them off from all external stimuli this usually involves placing a blindfold and noise canceling headphones on one member of an investigation team to cut off their senses then the audio output of a ghost hunting device is played through the headphones the rest of the team then call out to the spirits as mentioned before <coughs> and ask questions excuse me if any reasons are heard re, eat, any responses are heard through the ghost hunting device the team will not be able to hear it however the blindfolded participant will but since they won't be able to hear their fellow investigators their perception of these responses won't be influenced by the questions being asked so that's that 
that's one of my favorite favorite new fads like it's it's here to stay this is it's unique um and i think that it holds weight especially if you practice it in separate rooms like we did before like mm -hmm. we did at your shop when you put separation between yourself and the person using the headphones even if they're noise canceling there is still some amount of bleed through so if you can put space between the person doing the call out and the person receiving the the, the answer, that's legitimate. That's a, that's more legitimate anyway. So let's do one more. Exorcisms are an ancient religious or spiritual pattern, spiritual ritual, which are performed across many different religions and cultures in order to evict demons and other malevolent entities from a person or to end a spiritual attachment or possession. Have you ever done that before? No, I don't know if I ever would. You I would be, I would, I would be present there. Now I do have total faith in myself that if it was like an emergency situation, because I know that I would just go into like a channel and mode and call in whoever to do it. But I don't know if I would be, I don't know if I would advertise that and say, hey, I'll do this for you. Right. Well, I was watching this lady on TikTok and she was talking about how she felt like uh, demons had attached themselves to her sacral chakra, chakra mm -hmm. and had um, laid eggs or put sperm into her into her sacral chakra which if you're not familiar for watching this for the first time your sacral chakra is your butt your, your buttocks mm -hmm. um and so it was a fun play on words but she was you know having a good time explaining this very serious thing that she had gone through i have to find the video and share it with you <laughs> I don't know. No, you don't know? Uh, I don't know. She it, had to get her her uh, practitioner, okay. so to speak. She okay. had to get her to pull that out. Okay. She couldn't do that on her own. Right. So, okay. You know, okay. So, I was like, okay, yeah, I know what this lady's on. However, if you think <laughs> about it, there are situations where there are entities that can do things sexually to you, right? Um, there has been cases, and I don't know if they've ever been documented, but there has been people actually talk about this. So, I would imagine if an energetic type being like that could do something like that, maybe... Like an it incubus could, or succubus? Yeah, it could be, there could be energetic seeds, you know. And I do know that regular sex between people, you can pass on things. So why, um, so why not? Why could, why could it not be energetically? So, you know, as crazy as that sounds that I thought, after I really thought about it, I thought, I mean, yeah, it could, yeah. I mean, she was... As funny as it was, and mm -hmm. she was doing it on purpose, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? She yeah. was being very entertaining. Yeah. But at the same time, she was talking about this very serious thing that she experienced mm -hmm. and uh, an infestation and uh, and how she what she had to do to get rid of the situation. Yeah. So checking in on the chat before we move on to the efforts, the F. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about it one day. Abs what, what, tell me about what? What you going to tell me about, it, Linda? She's seen demons. <gasps> <laughs> what, are you, what are you making this face for? Glenda, she, well, she's got those dowsing rods. Glenda likes dowsing rods. So there ain't no telling what she's, she's you finding. You th oh, yeah. That's very real. I don't know... No, baby, you're Southern. You don't sound ridiculous saying those words. A Southern accent makes everything sound good. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right. That would scare the crap out of me. 
I'm afraid of the dark. Karen, there's nothing to be afraid of. Unless there's something to be afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First one on the list for Faye. And I think, uh, well, there's only three. There's two for F. So maybe we can get through F and G. F and G. F and G, yeah. Fae, uh, in, a folk, in folklore, a fae refers to a fairy or a type of supernatural entity. Uh, you were talking about the fae earlier. Mm -hmm. Full spectrum camera. A full spectrum camera is just like an ordinary camera, but as the name suggests, it can see the full light spectrum, including light in the infrared and ultraviolet frequencies that the human eye can't see. Uh -huh. A camera, a full spectrum camera. What? I'm hearing things. Did y'all hear something? <laughs> hit the hit the the mute button, Rachel. That wasn't me. That was Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> a full uh, raggy. There are obvious advantages to having a camera that can see more than the naked eye when ghost hunting. Not to mention the fact. That when paired with an infrared light source, the camera acts as a night vision camera. Almost, it's close. It's not quite there. Uh, the, the more infrared lights you have, the better it works. Uh, full spectrum camera. Most cameras are full spectrum at this point. You just need to make sure that you have the correct light. Uh, have you seen, not to keep sidetracking you, Squirrel, have you seen where uh, now they have like an attachment for iPhones? And I think it's probably only us. I don't know if it is certain. It's just certain brands and models where you can attach an iPhone, I mean, an infrared camera to your iPhone. I have not seen that. Uh, that's yeah. very interesting. It is. It's really cool. Well, I've seen it only on internet. I know my, my camera on mm -hmm. my phone. Uh, this is an S8, so it's several years old at this point. Uh, but it is full spectrum. The way that you can test for this, and I actually learned that this exact thing from uh, HiggyPop.com as well. They're not a sponsor. They're just cool as shit. Um, you take your remote control to your TV, and you put it in front of your camera, and you press one of the buttons. If you press one of the buttons and you can see the light, from on your on the front of your remote with your camera then you have a full spectrum camera you just need to get your hands on more infrared lights the more you have the brighter they are the more you're going to be able to see right how cool guess what i'm going to do when i go home <laughs> <laughs> um and you can buy you can buy the big Big red LEDs. I've been thinking about getting them. They're only like 23 bucks a piece, and you can get them with like foot mounts all over them. Mm -hmm. So you can get a bunch of them and make a tree of them and then mount your phone underneath them. That's what's going down, but I got to get some money first. <laughs> or some Harbor Freight discount codes. <laughs> <laughs> some Harbor Freight discount codes. <laughs> Um, I wonder if people would buy my Harbor Freight discount codes. A full spectrum camera. Uh, let's move on to geophone. A geophone measures a movement in the surface. It is sat on and it indicates its intensity through a display of lights and audible tones. On a ghost hunt, quote unquote, it can alert investigators to knocks, bangs, and movements, especially those which are too small or subtle to hear. The geophone is useful as it can be placed a long distance away. Investigators can still see if its lights flash despite being too far away to hear or feel a sound or vibration. I think I might have only seen this. I think I might have only seen this once. Uh, it was set up as a foot panel. Essentially, they took like four big ass lights that were, were motion activated and sat them on the ground, like almost like building a dance floor mm -hmm. for the ghosts. <laughs> and they had some activity. 
you could see it was so well done. The LEDs were in a way that if something hit one side of it, it caused a ripple effect across the entire device. So you could tell at which point on the mm -hmm. device the contact was being made with. So that was that was pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure that would be expensive as hell. Last one. Uh, well, yes, last one tonight, and then we're going to close it out. Uh, and you know, if you guys is ghost. I mean, if you don't if you don't know what that one is, then what are you doing? I appreciate you being here. You clearly love me. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you you love the topic. Um, but their definition of ghost is generally accepted that a ghost is the soul or spirit of a dead person or animal that can can or has manifested into a physical or at least a visible apparition that can be seen by the living. These apparitions may appear to be solid or translucent. Dark figures, although technically a ghost, are more often referred to as shadow figures. The word ghost is often used as a more broad term to describe the supernatural entity behind any haunting. So shadow person, shadow figures, fall under that same thing uh wow <laughs> bobby who from whoville there <laughs> the shadow figures it's hot it's hot in here really yes it's hot it who is, hot. is in bobby's room probably kevin damn it anthony <sighs> wow <laughs> <laughs> That's my cell phone ring. That's my notification. I should have put my phone on. Anyway, um, so shadow person is considered a ghost. Ghosts are often more referred to as a sh as shadow figures. I don't know. I thought I always felt like that was two different things. Well, I guess because. I don't know, you know, so, okay. To me, it's like whenever people talk about shadow people, mm -hmm. it's usually in a negative way, right? Yes. However, I've often wondered when people astral travel or astral project, mm. could, could it be a, a sort of a shadow person? Maybe, you know, like maybe they're doing a different part of their energetic body, you know, or maybe they're, I don't know. To me, that seems like that could be there, or there. It. I don't know. Busy. All right. So. Yeah. Well. It, it's so funny how you're having all these noises after we called out. That was that was my brother. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what he's wanting, but he. He's yeah. like there, he's like there's a shadow person in the living room. Hey man, who is this? <laughs> they want to talk to you. <laughs> Your friends are here. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, I'm going to try to do this more frequently. I'm not going to do it every, every week. Well, you know what? I am going to do it every week. Next week, probably going to do it a little sooner uh, than eight o'clock. I'll probably go earlier. Uh, simply because Jennifer has a show that comes on uh, every two weeks and I don't want to be competing against my friend. So uh, I may go a little sooner next Friday, but I think that making this happen on a Friday afternoon is going to become a regular. Now that's going to lend itself to maybe some mundane things like going through a glossary about the paranormal, but we're going to have fun while we're doing it. Uh, I'm Rachel join me tonight. Likely we'll have Michael or, or, uh, or Matt join me. Jennifer's welcome. Lee's welcome. Uh, and, and we'll do this together. The thing, thing is I have been trying to get things perfect for a long time in order to get out here and do this thing. I've been trying to get things perfect before I actually open up 
the broadcast and allow people to come in to the comments and say hello. Um, but if I'll always wait for it to be perfect, then I'll never get out here and do that. Right? I totally agree. <laughs> and that's with everything, you know what they say. You'll travel whenever you got the money. You'll have kids when you got whenever you have the money. Right. No, you just gotta do it, Bobby. I jumped off this week. You can jump off this week. What did you jump off? A cliff. No, I don't know. I just <laughs> I'm just I'm 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 committing to. So I'm committing to some personal goals and we're getting legit. I am getting legit. <laughs> me, right. and, me and Bobby Brown are gonna be too legit. We're getting legit. Um, All right. But speaking of legit, it's time to quit. Um, thank you again for chiming in. Share this with your friends. Hit the like button uh, and go over and like our Facebook page so you can set up notifications so you can get notified whenever we go live next and discover what happens after G. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. Y'all take it easy. Good night. Bye, guys.